Looking for magic cards or magic carps? TCG Player has all the singles you need to upgrade your decks. Import a list with mass entry and let the card optimizer do the rest. Use my affiliate link down below when shopping and you'll be supporting the channel at the same time. Hello and welcome to another Standard Games video. Today we're taking a look at a red-white or Boros Flicker deck featuring Nahiri's Resolve as suggested by my supporters on Patreon. This is also a deck that's very likely to survive the upcoming ban announcement as we're not playing with Fable of the Mirror Breaker, there's no Wedding Announcement, no Wandering Emperor, all these cards are potentially on the cutting block but we'll have to wait and see for the official announcement on Monday. So for now we're just playing a Flicker deck that's great alongside Nahiri's Resolve, a 5 mine enchantment, saying creatures we control get plus one plus two and have haste, and at the beginning of our end step, exile any number of non-token artifacts and or creatures we control, return those cards to the battlefield under their owner's control at the beginning of our next upkeep. So it's upkeep instead of end step, so we do have to wait a full turn to get our creatures back and reap the rewards from their enter the battlefield abilities, and it also means we won't be able to block during the opponent's turn with those creatures, but it can also have its advantages against sorcery speed removal, our opponent won't be able to take out our creatures, can dodge those sweeper effects as well, and then of course when our creatures re-enter they will gain haste so they can attack right away, so that's not a concern. So what do we want to pair with Nahiri's Resolve? Well, I've heard Itali has a pretty powerful Enter the Battlefield ability. The 7 mana 7-7 seven, seven, Legendary Trampling Dino lets us cast a spell for free from each player's library. So that can potentially find even more action and keep the ball rolling. Can also transform Itali into the Primal Sickness, which can also potentially close out the game in a single attack and turn indestructible in the process. And then we also have Sanctuary Warden at 6 mana, a 5-5 five, five flyer, enters the battlefield with two shield counters on it, and whenever it enters or attacks we can remove a counter from one of our permanents, that's a creature or a planeswalker. If we do we get to make a 1-1 one, one citizen and draw a card. So if we have a hasty Sanctuary Warden thanks to Nahiri's Resolve, it enters the battlefield, makes a token, draws a card, attacks right away thanks to haste, makes another token, draws a card, and then end of turn we get to flicker it, so on the following turn it can return with two fresh counters to keep drawing or potentially protect itself if necessary. Necessary. And then we also have two copies of Elishnorn, which of course shines in an ETB effect deck, as we now get to double all our Enter the Battlefield triggers while shutting down any of the opponent's stuff. So that can also be very nice, especially alongside cards like Warden and Itali. And then the early game consists of two copies of Ambitious Farmhand, can find a Plains when it enters to ensure that we keep hitting our land drops. Four copies of Spirited Companion, just draws a card when it enters. Then two copies of Ossification, to exile opposing creatures or planeswalkers, can also be doubled by Elishnorn, which is pretty fun. And then we could also potentially channel a Twin Shot Sniper to deal two damage to any target, can also ignore the attacks from Thalia for instance, and we also have the flexibility of casting Sniper for four mana as a 2-3 with reach that still deals two damage, so we can also maybe double it with Elishnorn or flicker it with Nahiri's Resolve to repeatedly deal two damage. Then at 3 mana there's 2 copies of Loran to blow up artifacts or enchantments when it enters. And then the Restoration of Iganjo is perfect in a deck that's trying to ramp into 6 and 7 mana cards, as first we get to find a planes, then we can uh, discard a card if we do return a permanent card with mana value 2 or less from our graveyard to the battlefield tapped, so we can even get back a land from the graveyard which helps us ramp, and then eventually transforms into a 3-4 Architect, which is a vigilant creature that when it attacks or blocks makes a 1-1 token, so that's also very nice with Nahiri's Resolve, as we can attack with it the turn it transforms and immediately make tokens, which also benefit from the one extra power and a 1-1 double strike also benefits from a one extra power. The Thresher can be cast for three mana as a 1-1 that draws a card with double strike or we can cast its seven mana version which is a 3-3 with double strike that still draws a card. Can also cast a seven mana version if we find it off an Itali which is pretty fun. And then our mana base has three copies of Cabaretti Courtyard, which will gain a life and fetch up either a mountain or a plains. Do need some basic lands to enable ossification as well, so that's important. And getting back Courtyard with Restoration can also net us a bit of extra life. And then we've got some red white dual lands with Sundown Pass Battlefield Forge, the channel lands for added interaction, and then a plenty of planes especially to search up between our farmhand and our restoration of Agancho, and then two mountains to have two red sources to fetch with Courtyard to make sure we can cast a tally in a timely fashion. So yeah, that's our deck, now let's jump into some games and see how the deck does. Okay, we're on the draw, our hand is definitely on the slow side with double a tally, so... Not loving it. Let's take a mulligan. This is a bit better. And then let's get rid of one Thresher. Turn to farmhands, get a land. 
Turn 3, now Restoration most likely. Was a close call whether to put Companion or Second Thresher on the bottom with her Mulligan. Since, of course, with Farmhand we're guaranteed a third land. But could see situations where you want to double spell with Companion. Opponent flashes in reinforcements. Opponent attacks. Yeah, I'll trade. Could have traded for the token, that way they cannot get back reinforcements with something like an extraction specialist, all the reinforcements is a human for potential human synergies. Okay, another reinforcements. And an attack for three. Discard Companion, or we could discard Land, put it in play. That way I can maybe play Warden next turn already, and we get closer to a Tally. That still seems worthwhile. And then, could also get back a Farmhand to guarantee an extra land, but it doesn't actually ramp us. So I think we're going for the higher upside play here. And then we're likely finding a couple more lands with a double Companion. Still need a second red source as well. And a Wandering Emperor now flashed in. Okay, so they can keep up the pressure. There's our second red. So we can play Warden next turn. Which helps us get towards Itali. Opponent attacks. Could trade here, could keep our companions in case of a Nahiri's resolve later. Although if we do, we should be in fine shape either way. Okay, play out our Sanctuary Warden. No untapped land for Itali yet, but we can keep ourselves entertained with a Comet Thresher as well. Brutal Cathar Exiles Warden. Although if we find a Sniper we can potentially take care of it. I'll just take four here. And Elspeth's Smite, a good reason not to block the first Striker. Still trade, make a token. And play a Tally. And we hit a Twinshell Sniper and another Brule Cathar. That worked out. So Cathar exile the token. Sniper kill Cathar, get our Warden back. And kill Wandering Emperor. Yeah, that's pretty brutal. So all we're missing is an Ahiri's Resolve, pretty much. Opponents get another Cathar. That's a dangerous game. Exiles Itali. So, how do we want to proceed? Can attack first with Warden, see what we draw off of it. And the rest is fine to stay home. Could also simply pass a turn, let it switch to Knights, and then try to flip back our Brutal Cathar. But I'm fine just casting some spells. Maybe start with Companion. Find another Loran. And then play Thresher. Could still maybe hit a Sniper or an Ossification here. Alright, that does it. So, Ossification. Our basic, Exile and Cathar, getting back at Tally. And our opponent has seen enough, on to the next one. Alright, we're on the play with a decent hand. We'll get our mountain here, turn two farmhands into restoration. 
And then with restoration we could also maybe get back our fetch land if we need to get a second mountain for Itali. Turn one escort from our opponents, that's fine. So it could be a green-white plus one counter deck. Yep, green mana confirmed. And a beast caller. Could be worth taking out with a sniper while we can. And then we can still play our courtyard here. And get a mountain. Ozolith. This is going to be a problem later in the game. For now, don't think we bother with Sniper. Let's just play Restoration. And then we can maybe ramp out Italia turn sooner. Botanical Brawler enters as a 3 3, so it doesn't die to Sniper. And Double Brawler is quite scary. So, yeah, the damage is going to pile on very quickly. And they also have an escort for protection, although they don't have protection from ossification at least. So now what? If we want to guarantee Itali, I discard maybe something like Sniper, get back Courtyard, play Companion, play ossification. And that way we will have the 7 mana next turn. And then hopefully Itali can carry us to victory. Okay. Pass it back. Also with the gross escort which in turn grows Brawler up to 5-5, five five. and I'll just take it for now. Another Ozolith cycled, so if we find a Loron to destroy it now, they may not have a backup. Warden's not bad either, but we're here for Itali. Got some juicy top decks potentially. And an Ahiri's Resolve was at the top of my mind. Team gains haste. Can attack with Architect, Itali, and we'll leave Contaminator back, I think. Make a token. And then end of turn, Flicker Itali for sure. Probably... Find Flickering Companion and Farmhand as well. Still have a decent number of blockers back. Don't want to make the mistake of Flickering the opponent's creature here, since they would get it back. Alright, third Brawler. So, that's still definitely a threat. They can activate Ozolith. One card left. And oh no, it's a Boseju to destroy our Nahiri's Resolve. That's too bad. We'll still get our Itali back. Just won't have haste. They could have also tried to set up an ambush by making us lose one power all of a sudden. Now probably set up a double block. Like so on the escort. Take nine. And get our stuff back. And then let's get land first, then draw, and then trigger a tally. That seems fine. Just want to thin out the deck first. And we hit a free Sanctuary Warden and Contaminator. And Loran can finally destroy Ozolith. 
So, play another Warden first. And play Loran. So we've got our defenses set up. Should be able to survive an attack. And our opponent explodes. Awesome. A very close game against green-white counters. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw with a decent hand. Got companion into hopefully restoration. Bit of early interaction too with ossification and sniper. So just need to hit our third land drop. Potent's blue-green. And then we've got a nice late game with Nahiri's Resolve and Sanctuary Warden. Opponent ramping with Topiary Stomper. Okay. So for now, just play Restoration, get a Plains. We do have the option of maybe discarding an Ossification next turn and putting it in play with a second chapter. Although we might be better off just uh, ramping and putting the planes on the battlefield. Opponent passes. And yeah, we'll just put a land into play here. And then I could cast a 4 mana Twin Shot Sniper just to have it in play. Could preemptively get rid of a Topiary Stomper. I think uh, I'm just going to start by attacking for 1. And sure, we'll cast a Sniper. Still good to flicker with a Nahiri's Resolve later in the game. Might need to save Ossification for something scarier. Okay, Mind Splice, we can potentially remove with Loron. There is a chance our opponent could put lands in play at instant speed. Joint Exploration comes to mind, so that could enable the Stomper all of a sudden. So we'll have to be mindful of that. Ooh, opponent stealing our Twin Shot Sniper and making a token. Fair enough. So... Could take this opportunity to remove the Mind Splice apparatus before it gets out of hand. And then Ossification to deal with the Stomper. Or we could just play a Sanctuary Warden and uh, next turn maybe Double Spell. Kind of like that idea as well. No attacks. It's going to be a Nissa next, which could also destroy our enchantments, so we have to be mindful of that. It's going to destroy our Architect as well. And Stomper attacks. Could remove the shield counter from Sanctuary Warden, which may be fine. Can always reset it with Resolve. And found another Warden. So we'll destroy the real Sniper, exile the fake one. Although maybe it was better the other way around, in case they remove Ossification somehow, I get my Sniper back. Could of course also Ossification Nissa, but that's not the most reliable answer in case they find a way to remove my enchantment. Another Stomper's okay. And Azus has many journeys. Okay, so if we resolve the resolve, we're in pretty good shape. Can destroy the Mind Splice. Can get a lot of value from our Warden. And then we can attack with maybe everyone except Loran, but our opponent's already seen enough. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw with a keepable hand. Got some early card draw, making sure we hit our land drops with a farm hand and sniper for interaction. Can curve 2, 3, 4. Well, their opponent could be on a mono blue deck here, which can be a tough matchup. We're not an aggressive deck, 
So we'll give the opponent plenty of time to set up a lethal hot gen. It's going to be a fairy mastermind for now. That one we can still take out with a sniper. Take two. And then, yeah, we have to be careful with the Mastermind, because if we draw our second card, the opponent also gets to draw. So probably want to avoid playing Common Thresher. And we can just hit for one. And then plan to channel Sniper, maybe in the opponent's turn, we'll see. Moment of Truth. So, sure, in response, I can channel in case they pick up a Protection Spell here. That worked. Now we have a potentially very exciting sequence of playing Elish Norn and drawing a bunch of cards with all these extra ETB effects. Opponent considers. And we'll hit for one, play Thresher. Even though Companion plays around and make disappear a little bit better. It's going to be easier to deploy this once we have an Elish Norn on the battlefield, hopefully. And our hand is getting pretty stacked with Sanctuary Wardens. Opponents keeps on drawing. So we could see a very cheap Tolarian Terror for one mana. There it is. But we get to resolve Elish Norn and hopefully... It uh, sticks around for a while. Hottie Jin, yeah, that's gonna kill us pretty quickly. Unless Sanctuary Warden can get in the way. Well, let's start hard casting Warden. I could bait with Companion first, but need to get these six drops in play eventually. Ertai Scorn, at least a hard counter, means they don't have the more conditional counters in hand. Another Terror, that's okay. It's mainly the Haughty Djinn, that's the problem. Okay, next turn we can double spell Companion and Warden for now. Just play Warden. That resolves, perfect. And I'll just uh, cash in one counter, and let's just get rid of the second one. I'm okay trading Warden for Hadi Jin if our opponent offers. And now we've got Itali as another exciting play. The most likely interaction for the opponents would be a bounce spell, so the shield counter doesn't help there. Although this looks like our opponent might be setting up a blue march, and yeah, there it is. So now they can just attack in for lethal with the double Tolarian Terror. That's too bad. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play with a keepable hand. Turn to companion, hopefully pick up a land for turn 3 restoration. And sure, we'll just play a fetch land now to guarantee restoration on 3. Can get a mountain, we'll have plenty of planes already. Opponent's a multicolor dragon deck, I'm excited to see it in action here. Play a restoration. And then next turn I could discard companion, get it back. And then cast a 4 mana sniper. Since we aren't really ramping into a 6-drop where I would need to put land in play. Can also get back the fetch land for what it's worth. But uh, yeah, this seems fine. And then next turn, playing Nahiri's Resolve lets us attack and then already start flickering our creatures. Opponent discards a couple spot removal spells. And an invasion of Tarkir, likely to kill Sniper if they have any dragons in hand. Reveals the Dawn Sky. 
Okay. Still happy to play Nahiri's Resolve, also very good with the Architect here. Getting to attack right away, the tokens also get extra power. And then certainly Exile Companion, I think we'll keep Architect in play just for the added pressure. We'll be able to generate enough value with Double Companion and Sniper. There's a Dawn Sky. Companion's back. And Itali's gonna be exciting next turn. For now, can channel the Twin Shot Sniper or cast it, which is probably better with the Nahiri's Resolve. And then can play another Companion as well. Okay, just cast it. Kill Reflection. And Architect can attack. Opponent trades. And our opponent go to Moonvale Regent. These are gone. Opponent can potentially transform the invasion of Tarkir. But a hasty Itali should be quite powerful. Okay, Sarkon is next. Can copy the next dragon they play. And then could deal two to Sarkon to dissuade a block. And uh, no shortage of great options. Elishnorn also exciting. But let's see what Itali brings to the table. Companion and Dawn Sky. Yeah, that seems pretty good. And our opponent explodes. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play with a keepable hand. Got a 2-3-4 curve. And then we should be able to find some top end cards. Put on black whites. And their own companion, fair enough. Don't really want to trade when we have Nahiri's Resolve in the deck. And our hand is shaping up nicely. The Virus Beetle makes us discard, a Sniper can go. And yeah, could play another one, could save it until after Elishnorn. And if they have more discards, then I may also want to discard Sniper here. Sure. Could still attack with Thresher, and if they double block, I could channel. That seems pretty bad. Let's just pass. It's going to be Companion to draw. And a Knight Errant makes sense. So, slightly regretting not killing their creature now. Finds another Virus Beetle. Okay, play Elish Norn, and that should stop a lot of the ETB effects. Opponent sets up an all-out attack. So, another Iganjo means we shouldn't block Knight Errants. Could just be a board wipe incoming. Think I'm safe to block a 1 1 with Elishnorn. Try something like this. Could also chump Knight Errants in case of a board wipe to save ourselves for damage. Sure. Can always get it back with a restoration here. Sunfall. Okay, glad we traded off. And then now double restoration to hopefully set up Itali, although we're still missing the double red for it. Can at least play Sanctuary Warden. And if they play Virus Beetle, I'll just discard the planes now. Scavengers, okay. What abilities are there? 
I guess there's a reach. So 3-3 three, three reach for the time being. And can hit us for 4 with the incubator token. Okay, we'll play Warden. And then I could discard Courtyard. Could also discard planes here. Although, I guess there's a chance that if I get back companion, I could draw a mountain. So, sure, let's discard planes. Get back companion. No mountain, but another courtyard. So, we'll just play warden then. And another courtyard seems fine. We have plenty of things to discard to Virus Beetle. And we may want to work our way up towards the uh, 9 mana ability and 2 life to transform Itali. Beetle could discard Sniper. Might prefer the card draw from Companion. Okay. Start by playing Itali and see what's up. opponent's gonna have to discard we get to draw and we can choose the expensive version here that's nice scavengers could be quite good with our own thresher if it gains double strike and a corrupted conviction to sacrifice draw to before deciding what to discard and all tank with warden Got another one in case they answer it anyway. And a second Itali, good in case of another board wipe. But it's gonna block, so that's a chum block. So another Sunfall seems likely. And yeah, this one's gonna be pretty large. Opponent can sacrifice draw two again. Okay, this is gonna hurt. And yeah, there it is. Got a 9 powered token. Let's see, we can play Farmhands and then still play Natali. So we definitely have the mana now to transform Natali if necessary. Let's see here, Invasion to make the opponent discard two cards. And Thresher once again to draw. And our opponent has seen enough, yeah, getting a taste of their own medicine. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play with a keepable hand. Some good early plays, bit of removal. And then of course Elishnorn could be exciting. Opponent a red-green could be a tokens deck. For now, play farmhands. Yeah, this might be an Imperiosaur tokens deck, so definitely want to take out Greeters, and I'm happy to trade for Epicure just to keep their creature count low. Yeah, let's just channel Sniper, even if it's not the most mana efficient play. And then next turn, maybe Restoration. Okay, never mind. I guess it's more of a red-green aggro build after all. Still happy to play Restoration. Make sure we can play Illusionor next turn. Stimulus package would have been great with the Gala Greeters. Can make some tokens. And I could discard a land, put it in play, that way if I top deck another land, I could play Tally. 
Don't know if that's necessary, but I kind of want to keep the creatures to get double the ETB effect anyway. So, sure, we'll go with this line. Play Ilishnorn, and then with an untapped land, so we get Itali. If not, Companion and Thresher with double ETB should still be pretty effective. A rabbit battery, so yeah, Imperiosaur is looming potentially. Just Felden attacking. Yeah, I'll block. Finds another Gala Greeters potentially. Get to untap. Did not find the land, unfortunately. So kick things off with Companion, leaving 4 mana in case we can play a Twinshot Sniper and take out some creatures. It's just going to be a combat Thresher. So yeah, the concern here is a hasty Imperiosaur still trampling us to death. A Loron we cannot cast anymore. Would have been pretty effective at destroying Rampant Battery. So we're at the mercy of the opponent's deck here. Definitely fine to offer the trade for Elishnorn, since I'm terrified of an Imperiosaur. Opponent takes it, so... How much damage are we going to be taking? We have a decent amount of toughness, at least. So we may not be dead on the spot. Opponent plays Greeters. And it's going to be a Sheevan Branch Burner instead. Which does not trigger Greeters because of Elishnorn, but gets in for 4. Okay. So Crisis averted and Nahiri's Resolve. Alongside another Thresher seems pretty lethal to me. Even though Itali would have been a bit more fun potentially. Double Strike. Pretty nice alongside Nahiri's Resolve. Alright, sweet. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play, and our hand seems reasonable. Turn 2 Companion, turn 3 Loron, turn 4 Sniper. Working our way up towards Itali. Opponent a Poison deck, it seems. And Skrelf we probably want to take out sooner rather than later. Can do so with Loron as well, so don't need to Sniper just yet. Okay, Butcher, so... More of a Phyrexian tribal deck than necessarily poison deck. So go for Loron, destroy Skrelf seems decent. And then next turn we could play a 4 mana sniper if we'd like. A restoration ramps towards Itali as well. Opponent passes. So. Not in a hurry to play Sniper to kill Butcher, necessarily. So we'll just get this Restoration going. Courtyard gets another Plains. And then next turn I can get back Courtyard once again to gain an extra point of life. Don't have a compelling reason to activate Loran to draw, but we'll see. Opponent making two mites end of turn, okay. So, might be more of a poison deck after all. And an Elishnorn, now that one's scary. So I may need to dig towards more answers. Okay, I'll take the trade here. And then... Next turn I can play Sniper, take out Butcher, make it harder for them to transform Elishnorn. So I don't think we need to draw with Loron here.
and then play the land first so we can pay the one from Elish Nord. Okay, pass it back. So our opponent is playing green as well. Crawling Chorus. So they need one more creature before they can activate Elish Nord. Could see another charge of the Mites end of turn. So we need a good hit of Fatali. A Gix Yogmoth Praetor is kind of unexpected, and a companion to draw. Don't have any great attacks. End of turn charge. Nope, Infernal Grasp on Itali instead. And of course they could have uh, used Plaza to make white, thanks to Elishnorn. The rest is gonna miss, but our hand's also not all that amazing here. And opponent's got their own gigs. Okay, Sanctuary Warden was decent. Windshot Sniper can be channeled. Could do it now to avoid a transformed Elish Norn. And I don't think we should have tried to attack and have Elish Norn block. That seems unlikely to work. Okay, Ponon gets back Butcher. So have to attack with a Sanctuary Warden to find something else. And Elishnorn, a nice draw. So I'll pay the one. Play Elishnorn. Thresher draws two. Another Warden, and a land. Okay, so don't quite have the mana to play Warden and an Ahiri's Resolve next turn if we pick it up. But that's the type of card we would love to find. So it's going to be a Skralf. And Elish Norn transforms. So it's the Battle of the Elish Norns. So play Sanctuary Warden, hope to draw Loron more than anything to destroy the Saga. So we'll draw two right away. And no Loron. Can still attack with our Flyer at the very least to draw an extra card of Gix. Any other attacks? I doubt it. Itali for next turn, and then for now we're gonna have to chum block quite a bit as our opponent's gonna gain double strike on all their creatures and plus one plus one. But we could still set up a restoration or we could channel crucible to generate more chum blockers. I guess going for restoration's fine. Thin out a deck a little bit more. Do have a couple legendaries in play but not enough to discount it to a single red. And alright, our opponent explodes. I guess they don't have lethal, and we do have 10 power in the air to kill them next turn, so don't even need a tally. Close one here against the Phyrexian Sacrifice deck. So, yeah, good to see our red-white flicker deck in action. And Nahiri's Resolve was quite impressive every time we saw it in action. Although this is the type of card that is kind of awkward in multiples, since you do need creatures to enable it. So if you draw too many in Nahiri's Resolve, there's a good chance you don't have creatures to go with it. And in multiples, it's not as good as just having one of them as your five drop of choice. So yeah, that's going to do it for today's gameplay. want to thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always... Have a nice day.
I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel, and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.